In this video, I'm going to talk about the proof of Gödel's first and second incompleteness theorems. So Gödel's first incompleteness theorem, incompleteness theorem. Gödel's first incompleteness theorem is about the question of the solidability of mathematics, or more specifically, the solidability of number theory. So, is it possible to replace a mathematician with a computer algorithm? The answer to this question is no, and this no is what Gödel's first incompleteness theorem says. So the theorem is as follows. Okay, there is no, there is no algorithm that can decide whether or not a given sentence is true about natural numbers. And when I say natural numbers, I mean the structure n as the set of natural numbers, addition and multiplication. So the theorem says that there is no algorithm that can tell you whether or not a sentence phi is a theorem about natural numbers. You cannot replace a number theory with a computer algorithm. Okay, before getting into details of the proof of this theorem, I need to explain a famous problem in computer science. This is called halting problem. Halting problem. All right. Okay, assume that I have listed every single computer algorithm here. I have algorithm one, algorithm two, algorithm three, and so forth. You may convince yourself that the number of algorithms is countable, and I can list them here. Okay, so each of these algorithms that I have listed here get a natural number as an input. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. When I give a natural number as an input to each of these algorithms, the algorithm starts to work, and it may happen that my algorithm stops or gets into a loop. So I have a table of stop, stops, and loops. So each of these algorithms, given a natural number, stops or gets into a loop, and I have a full table of that. Okay, the whole thing problem says, so the whole thing problem is the following. Is there any algorithm that gives this table, this table, and I mean this table. So the question is, is there any algorithm that can tell you whether or not this any of these algorithms stops at at any of these inputs. All right. The answer to this question is negative, and I'm explaining here why. Okay, so the answer is negative. Negative. And the reason is the following. If you have such an algorithm that can give you this table, then you may have this algorithm that I'm writing here, algorithm H. This algorithm H gets a natural number as an input and does the following. Okay, if algorithm number n here, so when you give a natural number n as an input to my algorithm h, it just looks at algorithm n and input n. For example, algorithm 3 and input 3. So if algorithm n stops at input n, input n, then h does not stop. It just gets into a loop you may just put the loop yourself here. And otherwise, my algorithm stops when n is given as an input. All right, you may convince yourself that h is an algorithm because checking this part is by looking at this table, and this table itself is given by an algorithm. So what I have written here is a valid algorithm. Okay, now, on the one hand, h is an algorithm, and it's supposed to be in in my list, because 
I said I have listed every single algorithm here. So H is one of the algorithms that I have listed here. But at the same time, H is different from everything that I've listed here. Because for example, H is different from algorithm three at input three. It does the opposite thing as algorithm three does at input three. And H is different from algorithm two, sorry. H is different from algorithm two at input two. And it's different from algorithm n at input n. So on the one hand, H is in my list. And on the other hand, H is different from everything that I've listed. And that's a contradiction. So H is and is not in my list. And that's a contradiction. All right. So what does this have to do with the question of decidability in mathematics? The connection question comes in this lemma. The lemma says whatever the algorithms described can be written with a first order formula. Let me just be more accurate. There's a formula, phi of m, n, and k, that says the following. When the natural number n is given as an input to algorithm number m, let's say algorithm m, then this algorithm stops this algorithm stops after k steps or after running k commands. So I have a first order formula. This first order formula is written in this structure. So this is a formula written in the language of addition and multiplication and says when you give n as an input to algorithm number m, it starts to work and it stops after running k commands. So why is it possible to write such a thing as a first order formula? The reason is that the concept of algorithm, so algorithms, is connected to the concept of recursive functions. And this connection is called Church's thesis. Whatever, whatever you can compute using computer algorithm can be done, can, can be calculated via a recursive function. Recursive function, you, you may look for the definition of recursive functions, but they have an interesting recursive definition, and you may prove that they are definable using addition and multiplication. And that's the reason that you, that you can write this formula using only addition and multiplication of natural numbers. All right, so assuming that you believe me that that's possible to do, I have now the proof of Gödel's first incompetence theorem here. So the proof of Gödel's first incompetence theorem. If you do have, okay, let me just remind you, the question was, do you have any algorithm that can tell you whether or not a given sentence is true about natural numbers? If you do have such an algorithm, then your algorithm should decide about such sentences as well, all right? Okay, let me just be more accurate. I'm just gonna write a sentence here. Exist k such that phi of m, n, and k. Look, this sentence says when you give n as an input to algorithm number m, it stops. There's a final number of steps. There's a final number of steps at which your algorithm stops. All right, so if you have an algorithm that can decide about natural numbers, that can decide about sentences about natural numbers, then it can decide about these sentences as well. But deciding about these sentences is a bit deciding about whether or not algorithm stops at inputs. So if you have such an algorithm, then you have decided the whole thing problem, and that's not possible, and that's a contradiction. So the proof is that if you do have an algorithm that can decide about sentences in natural numbers, then you have an algorithm that can decide the whole thing problem, and that's impossible, and that's a contradiction. All right, so now I'm going to talk about the second incompetence theorem, but after wiping out these things. Second incompetence theorem. So, remember that the first incompletion theorem was about the question of decidability of mathematics. But the second one is about the question of consistency of mathematics. You know, mathematicians use 
the set of axioms of mathematics and they start proving things. Is it possible that I prove a theorem phi today and then at some later point I prove the negation of phi? So the question is that is mathematics contradictory or is it possible to prove that it's not contradictory? I'm going to talk about ZFC. So the question is, is ZFC consistent? And ZFC is the set of axioms for the set theory. So the question is, or let me just write it in a better way. Is it possible? Is it possible to prove that ZFC is consistent? That is contradiction free. All right. I'm just going to give a proof why that's not possible. All right. So assume that I have listed all formulas in ZFC. Phi 1, Phi 2, Phi 3, Phi 4. That's my list of all formulas. Actually, I'm listing formulas in one single variable. So these are formulas, formulas in the variable x. Quite interesting. Quite in interestingly, one of these formulas, for example, phi k, is the formula that says this. Says it's not possible to prove phi x of x. Phi x of x is when you put x in the formula whose index is x. Why is it possible to write such a formula? You know, the concept of proving something in mathematics can be done with an algorithm. So it's an algorithmic thing. You know, proofs in mathematics can be done using algorithms. And things that can be done with algorithms can be written with first order formulas. So it's possible to write a formula that says this thing is not provable. So what happens when I consider phi t of k? Phi t of k says it's not possible, there is no proof, there's no proof for phi k of k. And that's even more interesting because phi k of k says it's not possible to prove me. We have written a formula that says you cannot prove me. Alright. Okay, I, I have a lemma here. Lemma. If ZFC is consistent, then it cannot prove for K of K. Because if ZFC proves for K of K, then it proves that it cannot prove by K of K, and that would be a contradiction. So that's quite easy to prove that if ZFC is consistent, sorry, that's, that's an if. So if ZFC is consistent, then it cannot prove by K of K. So let me just write it this way. If ZFC, okay. I'm just gonna write this, rewrite this lemma as in the following lemma. In ZFC, this happens. If consistency of ZFC, then negation of, negation of so, so you cannot prove phi k of k. But that's quite interesting because negation of the probability of phi k of k is what phi k of k is about. All right, you may ask me what does that mean, consistency of ZFC? So that, that's also a first order formula that says ZFC is consistent. So it means that you cannot prove some contradiction. For example, you can't prove that x is not equal to x. So it's possible to write a formula that says ZFC is consistent. And this lemma can be done in ZFC itself. So there, there are some interesting details that I'm just leaving for simplicity. But what the second lemma is saying is that you can rewrite the first lemma in ZFC itself. So ZFC says, if I'm consistent, then you know, I cannot prove phi k of k. Actually, ZFC is saying that when I'm consistent, then phi k of k, this is phi k of k. All right, so assume now, assume that ZFC can prove consistency of itself. 
if Z of C proves that, that Z of C is consistent, then Z of C proves for P of K. Then Z of C proves for K of K. Or then, when Z of C proves for K of K, then Z of C is not consistent. So Z of C is not consistent. All right. So if Z of C proves that Z of C is consistent, so if, if you prove in Z of C that Z of C is consistent, then Z of C is not consistent. That's the only way that you can prove the consistency of Z of C. And that's Gödel's second incompleteness theorem. Yeah, thank you for watching.